Iran 2022. Resistance units take major strides. In view of the state of absolute repression and the use of brute force in dealing with any form of opposition, can Iran's ruling religious dictatorship be overthrown? The regime celebrated the anniversary of Iran's 1979 anti-monarchical revolution in February at a time when, following 43 years of ruling with an iron fist, the mullahs are facing crises from all directions, most notably at home. Iran has been the scene of eight uprisings since 2018, with protesters openly calling for the regime's overthrow. In 2021 alone, there were three major uprisings. Protests by people from different sectors of society, including teachers and pensioners, have become the new norm. To deal with a rapidly deteriorating situation, the regime has intensified its repression and turned protests into a bloodbath. Conventional wisdom tells us that the more intense the repressive measures adopted by the regime, the greater the atmosphere of fear in society. Yet, in Iran of 2022, the situation is quite the opposite. The impressive increase in the number of resistance units, a network affiliated with the People's Mujahideen Organization of Iran, PMOI-MEK, attests to this reality. The resistance unit's objective is to act as a sledgehammer cracking the wall of repression by directing and paving the path for nationwide uprisings. A glance at the first two months of 2022 shows the growth and impact of resistance units across Iran turning the tide against the regime. On January 5, 2022, the regime unveiled a six-meter-tall statue of Qasem Soleimani, the eliminated commander of the IRGC's terrorist Quds Force, in the main square of Shahr Accord, a city in central Iran. The statue was set ablaze the same night by resistance units members. On January 27, supporters of the Mujahideen Khalq and resistance units members disrupted the broadcast in 25 state television and radio networks by airing images of Iranian resistance leader Masoud Rajavi and NCRI president-elect Maryam Rajavi on several national television channels. They were also able to destroy more than 600 radio and television servers, sending shockwaves throughout Iran. In a frenzied reaction, the regime's officials vowed revenge. After a few weeks, the regime has failed to fully recover its systems. On February 9th, resistance units members seized control of loudspeakers in Mashhad's largest bazaar, airing the chants of Death to Khamenei and Viva Rajavi. On February 10th, amid the regime's fanfare over the 43rd anniversary of its rule, resistance units members simultaneously seized control of loudspeakers in shopping malls and public venues in four cities, Shahrere, Sarosyab, Fardis, and Shahriyar, west and south of Tehran, to broadcast chants of Death to Khamenei, Viva Rajavi, and Neither the Crown nor the Turban, Mullahs, your days are numbered. On February 15th, in a coordinated campaign, resistance units members set fire to government-installed banners containing images of Ali Khamenei, Khomeini, and Qasem Soleimani in various cities. Meanwhile, daily informative campaigns such as posting pictures of Masoud and Maryam Rajavi in public places of different cities across Iran have continued. The presence of resistance units members and MEK supporters throughout Iran is so prevalent that even regime officials have long warned about it, voicing concerns over the existential threats these units pose to the regime. Dar نهادها، ادارات، مریم و مسعود و دار و دسته مدل جدیدتر نفوزی دارند. 
اون مردمی که رفتن دو مال خاصه به زعم خودشون به پندار خودشون بقیده خودشون به حق خودشون بودن اما فقط دو نفر کافیه تو اونجا که کاری کنه سازمان منافقین تو هر شهر از این دو نفر رو داره قابل توجه شما ما بیش از 24 پنج هزار منافق فقط تو تهران Resistance units are a key element of the Iranian resistance strategy to break the regime's wall of repression imposed across Iran and place the foundations necessary for future uprisings.